Hello there guys, welcome back to Joker Laugh. Uh, my name's Francis Gray and today we are going to crack on with part 3 of the Morbius Models Grim Reaper build. Ok guys, so this is part 3 of this diorama build. Uh, part 1 and part 2 are already online. Uh, there'll be a link to those videos in the description bar below. Uh, so yeah, so this is cracking on with part three. So in part one, we built the kit up from a styrene form up to a basic overlook of how the how the model looks overall. Uh, part two was customizing it into this diorama layout, and then what to expect in part three is we're going to be going ahead and we're going to be painting up all the all the main key parts and then I'll be adding uh, various snow or snow effect in places where snow would accumulate there'll be a few little extra pieces added here and there uh, but for the most part this video is going to be from how it is now basically grey primed uh, building up and painting to a finished product so yeah so stay tuned Okay guys, so for the next part of this build, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start laying foundation base colours on everything. But before I crack on with that, uh, there was a little side note that I, I want to add. So I wanted a nameplate to go at the bottom here. Now unfortunately you didn't get a nameplate with the actual model kit itself, so I've had to uh, find one from... Uh, elsewhere so what I did was I uh, I took the box art and I scanned in this part and then I got rid of everything else uh, deleted all around the sides of all the lettering so I basically just had the Grim Reaper uh, saved that as a PNG file and then I found a company online where you can send them images and then they'll print them out onto small bits of uh, wood so what I did was, uh, or what I got back, I got back a small piece of wood with obviously the logo on it. Uh, I white primed it, left it to dry. Then I wanted like a grey effect, uh, like like uh, like tone going from dark to light. So I added that with uh, just regular black watercolour. I added it a little bit thicker on the bottom, and then used a bit of water to lighten it up to the white bit at the top left that to dry then I went around all the outsides with black and then again left that to dry once that was dry I then give it a couple of coats of uh, matte sealer varnish and then this is what I got in the finished results so as you can see there it's like a nice grey leading off to white effect so yeah so that is going to go at the bottom there so we'll add that at a later stage, that's probably going to be one of the last stages. Now I'm going to add it, is I'm going to add some scores on the back, just some scratch lines, something for the clay to hold on to. I'm going to put a, a bit of Aves Epoxy, and then I'm going to push it in place, and then the Aves Epoxy will hold on to the scratches, and then will mould itself to around here. I can also add a few little scratches here if I wanted to, which should help in the long run but for the most part yeah that's the idea so all in all I think that will look pretty cool so yeah so I'll put this to one side and then uh, we'll crack on with painting the tombstones okay guys so we've got the four main tombstones so we're ready to start laying some foundation colors to these now I always find that it's probably use, more useful with things like this to paint dark to light. So I want to keep them all grey or like a grey slash marbly kind of colour. So I'm going to start with uh, barely black. Uh, again, it's a tester pot from Wilco's.
Okay guys, so I'm going to start laying some foundation base colours to the Re Grim Reaper's robes. Uh, so instead of, most people go straight in with a black, uh, but I always find that's a bit too much uh, strong of a colour to go into. So yeah, so what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to go in with uh, a barely black. Uh, this is the same colour that we did the base coat to the gravestones with. So this should work out a lot better in the long run. Okay guys, so for the next part, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to lay some base colour uh, for the tree. So basically it's just going to be uh, probably two coats of uh, uh, acrylic dark brown. Okay, so for the next part, we're going to go ahead and we're going to leave a brown base coat to the main wooden part of the side.
Okay guys, so I've had a new idea. So I was going through some of my other kits, uh, just trying to get some decent ideas. And I, and I got this originally from uh, from the Witch uh, model. Uh, I believe it was originally made by Aurora, uh, but this was a reissue, one of the later reissues. Uh, so yeah, so this this was basically just random pots, uh, uh, sorry, uh, jars and uh, bottles and uh, stuff to put solutions in. But this is a, a lantern, so it's part A, part B. And uh, I'm wondering if instead of the little sand timer going on the Reaper's belt, uh, which is how the kit's supposed to be made, I was wondering if I could incorporate this instead. The sand, the sander, I might still use. I don't know, uh, or I might incorporate it in some other way. But for for now, I actually I think I'm more intrigued with this lantern rather than uh, the sand timer. So yeah, so I think I'm gonna take this off and then see if we can uh, use it in some way. <laughs> Okay guys, so the more I'm thinking about it, the more I'm quite liking this uh, lantern idea. So I've gone ahead and I've gone through all my me, uh, me electrical bit box just to see what was in there. And I came across one of these, you know those light taper things that you, you get them at Halloween time. We can get them all year round but they're mainly prominent at Halloween time and you chuck them in a couple of pumpkins and... They just basically have a flicker bulb inside. So basically I just took one of them apart. Uh, I... Well, the, the bulb that was in that one is a spare one. I've just put this to one side. Uh, but uh, I've got the same bulb, but was from a, was for something very similar to this. Uh, but this one's uh, already been soldered to two wires that are quite thin but quite long. So this one would prove but, uh, a little bit easier to do. So the idea is I'm going to house the bulb upside down on the inside of the uh, lantern. And then uh, put the back backing on. And then run the wires in through the hole that is supposed to house the the hourglass, and then run that down, and then uh, that's gonna go, then get soldered to this base, which has the off on off on switch, which will house the battery. So in theory. Uh, once powered or once turned on it'll look like that so it'll be a nice lovely little flicker effect bulb on the reaper so well that's the that's the theory anyway so yeah so uh, what I would need to do is uh, I would need to probably go ahead and feed this through and then I might have to map out a circle underneath the reaper so the idea is the reaper just basically sits in place and then i just basically just pick him up off the base turn the off on switch on and then put him back down and then the the lights flickering on and off so yeah so let's try and feed this through and mark this out oh one last thing is uh i'll probably have to go ahead and i'll have to grind this this connection piece off Okay, so now that that is well, smoothish, I suppose, uh, it's probably a good idea to go ahead and uh, map this out.
Okay, so let's try a quick test fit. Okay, so looks like it's all good to go. Okay guys, so now that we've got the hole uh, drilled, uh, what I've gone and done is I've basically just put the, I've just nestled the bottom of the bulb inside the bottom of the lantern and then uh, took the positive and the negative wire and then just wrapped it around the this outside handle so the wires are point inward so the idea is uh, once it's fed through that's the only part of the wires that will show but obviously I can work over that and blend it in so you're not going to see it so what I'm going to do is, uh, before I start feeding this through, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to glue this in place and then that shouldn't be uh, moving about and going anywhere. Then that will be a lot easier to work f around it. Okay, so we'll go ahead and we'll let that glue dry a minute and then we'll uh, concentrate more on feeding that through and getting it to line up. Now one thing I have noticed is that this is a circle pin connection and this is a square. So I'm going to be uh, opening this hole up, widening this hole up a little bit so this will then go ahead and fit in place. Okay, so that looks like a much better fit. Okay guys, so this is now dried so we can go ahead and try and feed these wires through Okay, so I don't want to go ahead and glue this in position yet because obviously I'll need to uh, rework it and paint it. Uh, but for the most part, we can go ahead and uh, try to attach the wires in the various spots. So I went ahead and I glued the bottom connecting part of that TP light to the bottom. So I used Gorilla Glue so it formed around the side so it's, a nice, it's not going anywhere, it's a nice tight fixture. Uh, unfortunately, the, uh, the I've had to remove the on off switch. Uh, basically when I looked at it, it was just a... Uh, a bit of plastic, there was no metal uh, connections to connect it to, to solder it to, so yeah, it was very cheaply made, so I couldn't use that. So what I did instead was, uh, the blue wire is uh, connected to the top part of the battery, and the red wire comes out, and then it's soldered to the bottom of the lid. So once you put the battery in, it comes on automatically, so the idea is, the reap is not going to be putting uh, he's not going to be fixed to the base he's going to be uh, you can take him off 
uh, and then all you got to do is basically just undo this screw, put a uh, battery in and then close it again and then it'll come on flickering. It is a bit more of a pain and yes I could have gone out and got a better connection point and an off off on switch. I might refix that later in the future, I'm not too sure, but for now yeah, I'm, it's fine as it is, I'm happy with what it is. Uh, the only negative is, as you can see there, this lantern has this top rim coming out. And as you can see, it makes it stand out and away from the Reaper. So, I'm going to have to use my uh, trusty uh, drill bit, well, sander bit, and then uh, I need to take off... Uh, a little bit of the layer. I might start with just the back layer first and then because I can see part of that hidden uh, emerging into where the robes is. So I'll, I'll try the back part first and see how the connection fits uh, and then if it looks if it doesn't look all that great then I might have to try and mirror the same image on the front. <laughs> So you can see there, that fits a lot better now. So it's not stood out and protruding. It looks uh, a lot nicer. So yeah, so there's a little stuck out front bit here. So I might go ahead with the, uh, while well, I've got the sanding uh, bit out, and I might sand that bit down. Okay guys, so I hope the camera's picking that up. That looks a lot better. So yeah, so now I just need to try and super glue these uh, wires so they're nice and taut and then we can uh, think about laying some base colours. Hi guys, so this is how it's looking at the moment. Now, because I've gone ahead and I got rid of that connection seam, that like a rectangle shape uh, to the bottom of the reaper uh, that no longer fits into this hole so there's nothing keeping the reaper in place uh, but because these have got three struts in place uh, and also this uh, side if you put it in the designated hole the reapers looking a little bit off center so I would prefer it if it was more dead on center so looks like I'm going to have to make some new connection hole seams so the best way to do that is to go back in with some air drying modeling clay mold it out up and towards where the tree starts and then place the reaper back in position Okay guys, so I went ahead and I scratched the bottom of the styrene base, basically just to give the clay something to hold on to. Uh, put the clay out, rolled it out as best I could, and then I've gone ahead and I've done like a scored a zigzag pattern again. Same again, uh, that is just so I can layer add a top layer of uh, polyfiller, uh, like I did with these other sides, and it has something to hold on to. So now that the clay is... Uh, uh, on there, uh, now's a good time to add the reaper. Okay guys, so he's looking a little bit more centre focused, which I'm happy with. 
so I'm going to leave him in place and I'm going to let the clay uh, dry and harden around him. The reason why I don't want to take him off is because with uh, air dry on clay shrinking slightly, the holes that uh, to like a peg system that are there in place, they might shift even if it's just a little bit like a little millimetre in it'll knock everything out of whack so yes yeah, so I'm gonna leave him there let the clay uh, harden and then I'll take him back off and then those sections where he connects to they'll stay in place and then I'll they'll just dry naturally over time so yeah so it's just a waiting game now let's leave him to dry okay guys so with the Reaper uh, drying on that modeling clay uh, now is probably a good opportunity to go ahead and start dry brushing some of these uh, tombstones. So I'm going to use a medium grey which is titled Flintstone. Again it's from Wilco's. Okay guys, so for the next part, because we've gone ahead and we've added some uh, highlights, some dry brush, uh, I usually like to go in with uh, a bit of wa black watercolour or watered down acrylic black. Uh, basically just uh, put it on there and then rub off the excess with a paper towel and then it all, the black will just accumulate in all the little nooks and crannies doesn't desperately need it it's just a step that i sometimes like to do but with this being like an aged old effect i think that these would probably uh suit a little bit of uh weathering so yeah so i'm gonna go ahead with that and i'll show you the finished results Okay guys, so while we've got the black watercolour out, it's probably a good idea to go ahead and do the same with the tree. Again, it just gets in all the little nooks and crannies and it just gives it more of an aged look. Okay guys, so as Bob Ross would say, it's a happy mistake, uh, the uh, the black acrylic uh, with the watercolour on top, uh, with the uh, roughness of the, the uh, kitchen roll, has took off the surface layer of uh, brown paint, but it's give the tree a more interesting weathered look. So yeah, so instead of uh, painting over it, I decided to basically work with it so we'll leave this to dry and then uh, and then we'll add some highlights on top okay guys so while we've got the medium brown still out uh, same again I'm gonna go ahead and uh, give this a dry brush just to add some highlights
Okay guys, so for the next part, I want to go ahead and I want to add a little bit of uh, a surface layer to uh, the lantern. So basically the metal parts, obviously we're leaving the glass part clear. Uh, so I want to add a bit of a primer. So I'm going to use this, now it's usually supposed to be for airbrush, uh, but uh, I'm just going to put a little dab of it on this palette and then just hand paint it on. Now this is a German red brown but it's a surface primer. Now I'm not going to keep it that colour, this is literally just to give the next coat of uh, paint something to stick to. So yeah, so let's crack on with this. Okay guys, so you can see there, it's got it's first coat on there, so it's not perfect but uh, it'll do for an undercoat. Now I don't want to go ahead and I don't want to waste on this primer, so I might go ahead and I might give the skull an undercoat and uh, I might also do the reaper blade. Okay guys, so the skull's now got a base coat, uh, so they'll be a lot easier to paint in the future. So I'll go ahead and I'll probably paint the other uh, bones, the other hands, and then uh, I'll probably do the reaper blade as well. Okay guys, so I went ahead and I also uh, give this tree a coat of uh, matte varnish, basically same again just to seal in the uh, black watercolour. Uh, as you can see there, the, uh, it took the top layer of, uh, of dark brown, that's okay because we're going to dry brush anyway so these paints, these parts are only going to get covered in paint anyway. So yeah, so what was more important was the deeper you know, nooks and crannies, really. So yeah, so let's go ahead and uh, give that a dry brush. Okay guys, so I went ahead and I mixed a bunch of colours together to make this uh, rather woody, wooden-y kind of light brown colour. Uh, I mixed quite a bit of it because I don't know how much I'm going to be needing. Uh, but same again, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to dry brush a fed lighter tone on the tree and then after the tree I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do the same but on the uh, wooden parts of the side Okay guys, so once the uh, watercolour had dried, I then give it all a quick blast of a matte varnish uh, from a spray can. Uh, just a quick once over, basically just to seal the uh, the watercolour in, in place I suppose. So yeah, so now that that's nice and dry, 
We're going to go back over with another highlight of uh, of uh, Flintstone medium grey, uh, basically just to make more highlights pop. Okay guys, so now that uh, that medium grey has uh, dried and uh, a lot more of the details are coming out I don't know if you can see that in the camera but You can see there's quite a lot of detail showing up on that angel So yeah, so we're gonna go ahead and just e emphasize the detail a little bit more so same again, I'm going to go in with more dry brush, but this time with a lighter grey. This is titled Meadow Mushroom, so basically Mushroom Grey. So yeah, so uh, I'll crack on with that and show you the finished results. So for the next part, uh, I'm going to try something new. So I wanted a few uh, like random like twigs poking out of the the uh, the snow, uh, basically to accompany uh, the main tree, uh, just to give a sense of this being left and overgrown. Now these, uh, I got a load of these. Uh, a couple of days after uh, Halloween, basically there were these like Halloween tree things, uh, and they want originally they wanted like two pound a tree, and because uh, it was a couple of days after Halloween, I think I got like them for like twenty p a tree. So I bought all what they had, and then basically yeah, spent a couple of hours taking them all apart. So I've got loads and loads and loads of these random. Little uh, little twigs and trees, so it comes in really handy. Uh, now I was gonna go ahead and just spray paint them uh, with a, like an acrylic black, uh, sorry, acrylic brown, sorry. Uh, but with them being uh, flexible, uh, that the paint on acrylic will uh, will chip away or come away. Uh, so then I thought, what about painting it with like uh, liquid latex and brown? Uh, that should work. But uh, while I was thinking about it, I came across this, which is uh, which is a flexible fabric paint. Now you're supposed to spray it on shoes or purses or belts or whatever. And uh, I think it, I think this basically uh, this is what it is like a latex brown or like a rubber brown. Uh, so yeah, so I've never tried this before, I've never used this before, this is a brand new idea, I hope it works, but uh, the idea is basically just put a load of these out, spray paint one side, let it dry, flip them over, spray paint the other side. So yes, let's see how we get on. Okay guys, so I went ahead and I give these uh, a quick coat, but if I'm truthfully honest, they didn't turn out all that great. They very much uh, just stayed like a black colour, even the lighter orange ones. Uh, there's a little tiny bit more of a browny colour to that, but it's very, very basic. So they didn't turn out as good as I was hoping. But I did go ahead and I did uh, trim one of them and dry brush it lightly, and I think that has turned out pretty pretty okay actually so I'm not gonna go too crazy I'm not gonna add loads I'm I'm thinking about just basically just like making a few of these and then just clipping the odd little branch off or the odd little bit off and then just poke it in the uh, in the diorama here and there so yeah so that's the idea uh, 
we'll see how we get on. Hi guys, so I'd like to talk about the hourglass. So I don't want to just not use this. I would like to go ahead and and make it up and uh, incorporate it somehow. If I can't incorporate it into this, because I know we've, we're using the lantern where this uh, should go. So if I can't incorporate it in this model, then I might go ahead and use it in another model uh, later down the road. But uh, I'm hoping that I can probably incorporate this into this one. But uh, on closer inspection, even though I do quite like the hourglass, uh, there's these inside connection struts that uh, are really bad. Um, really thick, really prominent. The idea is the pins fit into there so as to secure fit, but uh, it obviously leaves no room for uh, for like adding any kind of uh, sand or any kind of. I suppose paint effect. So yeah, so what I'm thinking is I'm going to get the Dremel out. I'm going to see if I can Dremel these down or Dremel them off. Yes, it'll make the plastic all scratched, but I suppose we're going for an old worn look anyway. So hopefully uh, it'll work in our favour. So yeah, so I'll crack on with that and show you the finished results. Okay guys, so that's probably about as best as I can do uh, with that at the moment. Just gives it like a frosted effect, but I suppose if it's going for a winter scene, then obviously uh, glass would uh, steam up, and obviously we're going to go for a neglect aged feel, so it might work in our favour, I don't know. Uh, but we'll crack on with it regardless, and we'll see, uh, see how it works out. Okay guys, so for the next part... Uh, I want to add a layer of this. Now this is basically titled Frost Glass Effect. And basically just gives like a frosted uh, shine to everything I suppose or a look to everything. So yeah I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to spray paint these. Um, I'll do one side first then I'll flip them over and do the other side. Uh, basically, I'm hoping that it just adds to the atmosphere that it's uh, it's just a little bit uh, icy. Okay, guys. So I'd go ahead and I'd say that the tombstones were more or less done now. Uh, the next stage is I'm going to go in and add some uh, snow with uh, just some regular polyfiller. Okay guys, so that's the basic idea. So you want the snow to be a little bit rounded and a little bit overlapping the uh, the surface area. And then when you've got excess bits on your fingers, just run them in the little gaps and nooks and crannies. And it basically just accumulates, uh, well, fake snow I suppose. Uh, don't forget to rub across the, uh, the main lettering because obviously snow would accumulate in a few places there. And then I also did the same with that big crack on the back. There's a crack there that I forgot to do, so go ahead and there we go. So we'll leave that to dry and I'll uh, crack on with the others.
Okay guys, so you get the basic idea, so we'll leave that to dry and then we'll uh, think about adding it to the base. Okay guys, so while we've got the uh, polyfiller still out and we've still got mucky fingers, now is probably a good opportunity to go ahead and add the snow to the tree as well. Okay guys, so there you can see, it looks a lot more wintry now. So more snow will be added to the bottom once it's been added to the base, but for now, uh, that's not a bad uh, first go. So yeah, we'll leave that to dry and then uh, we'll add it to the base. Okay guys, so I don't know if it's showing up on camera, but there are still quite a lot of scratch marks. That are shown through. Um, I can't think of any way to get around that really. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's a little bit disappointing, but yeah. Uh, so what I was thinking was uh, I might still crack on with it, uh, just out of curiosity, just to see uh, what it looks like or what the finished product might look like. But uh, in the meantime, I might. Uh, I might have a look online, see if I can find something a bit better. But uh, but yeah, but for now, yeah, I'm not a huge fan. Okay, guys. So this little bit of primer is now dried. Now there are a few bits on there that I won't be needing, like that. There is the peg system that goes into the reaper. I won't be needing that no more. So yes, yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to trim this off. I'm going to clean the ends up, and I'm going to. Think about maybe styrene gluing it together and uh, hopefully we can salvage this in some form. Okay guys, so I went ahead and I cut the two parts out and I cut off and filed down the connection seam. Now there is a big block part there that I can't really do much about. All I can do is just display it from behind so you don't really see it. So as you can see, it's 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 not perfect. It's not brilliant. There's uh, the scratch marks on the inside of the plastic is really visible. It's really showing up. So I'm a little bit disheartened with this so far. Uh, I'm gonna try. I'm still gonna head, go ahead and just persist with it, just to see if I can get something to decent from it. Uh, but instead of displaying it as a scratch glass, I have had the idea of trying to paint from the inside and make it like a pearlescent look kind of a thing, like a like a like a, I don't know, like a little bit of mist inside or something. So so yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use this. Basically, it's like a pearlescent uh, nail polish, and I'm just gonna put a little bit inside. Uh, and then just basically leave it dry and then let's see what it turns out like and let's hope for the best. So, I don't know if the camera's picking that up. Hopefully that dries and it eliminates some of the scratches. Okay guys, so this pearlescent effect is now dried and uh, I'm actually quite impressed with the results. So as you can see there, it's from the inside and then when you turn it around on the outside as you can see there, it looks more like, like mist I suppose rather than uh, those horrible scratches so it seems to have uh, masked it rather nicely. So yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to styrene glue uh, that as one piece and then I'm going to go around and repaint, um, repaint, uh, repaint the outside edges like a gun metal. 
Okay guys, so for the next part I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to give this Reaper a once over with some black watercolour uh, and I'm going to lightly wipe off the excess uh, with a napkin, basically just leave the, the little nooks and crannies a little bit darker uh, and then we'll leave them to dry. I might also do his face as well, same again just to get some depth in there before I start adding highlights. And we, I want to protect this because obviously with this being uh, like wires and electrical in nature, uh, I want to protect that from the watercolour. So I'm just basically just going to put it in this uh, just to keep it safe. So yeah, so I'll crack on with that and then show you the finished results. Okay guys, so we'll go ahead and we'll leave the Reaper to dry and then we'll start adding some uh, lighter tones. Okay guys, so as you can see there that the winter scene's now coming along quite nicely. Uh, now you might have noticed that I haven't added no accumulated snow on the bottom of some of the uh, tombstones. Basically that's because we're going to be adding more snow uh, in, a, in a moment. Uh, for, for the next part, before we start doing that, we need to make sure everything's glued in place. So I'm going to secure this with just normal uh, styrene glue. And then uh, I'm going to use uh, some uh, some hot glue from a glue gun to secure the, uh, the four tombstones. So after that, uh, we can then have some fun with uh, snow. Okay guys, so while we're waiting for the hot glue to warm up, uh, it might be a good idea to go in and add some uh, some fake snow lead up on the tree and it's probably a good idea to go ahead and coat maybe this part where the reaper sits. Okay guys, so that's okay for a surface layer, so now let's crack on with uh, adding the main tombstones. Okay guys, so I went ahead and I cut up that uh, branch that I made uh, and I've just basically set, uh, put it in some of the, uh, the, the I suppose the wet uh, polyfilla uh, basically just to cement it in place. I also added a little bit more uh, polyfilla to the top of the uh, Jeff Yeager tombstone basically just pushed it in there so once that's dried that'll in, in turn be uh, be uh, fastened to it. Same with the other one as well. I kind of wanted the impression that the tree was kind of like growing out and grabbing what was around it I suppose. So yeah so uh, I've only just done that one. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to dry brush some more so I can add a few more here and there. Uh, basically get it uh, to look like a really overgrown or uh, aged old uh, neglected uh, cemetery. So yes, yeah, so, so far I'm really happy with how this is looking, uh, let's just crack on with it. Okay guys, so this video is getting a little bit on the long side now, 
So I'm thinking about wrapping it up uh, and calling part three uh, done. So yes, yeah, so please come back for part four. If there's uh, if part four is already filmed, I'll add a, a link in the description below. If it just says coming soon, then obviously I'm still filming it. Uh, so if you like the build so far, smash that like button. And if you have any comments, please just comment in the section below. And uh, yeah, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the next part of this. And uh, yeah, uh, hopefully in the next one we can uh, finish this piece off. So yeah, so please like, subscribe, check out my other videos. And all, as always, thank you for watching. I'm Francis Gray, this is Joe Laugh, and see you next time. Thank you very much and goodbye.